So welcome ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to today's video and we've got a lot to discuss right in today's video. That's right, FIFA 21, we've got some gameplay news. We're going to dive deep into the gameplay, alright, so we're going to be talking about that, we're going to be talking about a couple of other things as well. Um, but yeah, well, we're still on the FIFA news, however, there may be some news coming out this week about Pez, so stay tuned for that. So let's talk about the first piece of information, of course, if you do enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe and smash that like button. So the first piece of news is regarding AS Roma, very much like Juventus last year. Um, something is happening, and that is this. So, AS Roma will not be known as AS Roma. They're going to be Roma FC. Which isn't too bad, especially considering what Juventus was called last year. I mean, Roma FC really isn't that much different to AS Roma. Um, they'll be playable and equipped with a custom badge and kit throughout Kickoff, Career Mode, FIFA Ultimate Team, and Volta Football and Roma FC will now compete in Stadion Olympic. So obviously uh, a bit of a change in naming there as well. So you can still expect to see the same AS Roma real world authentic players and related likenesses in EA's uh, FIFA 21. Uh, player chemistry within FIFA 21 Ultimate Team will be unaffected. So what does this mean? Well, we're going to wait and see because Konami haven't come out and stated anything about this. Um, but it is a little bit shady, isn't it? Why is now suddenly Roma, likewise like Juventus? And we all know what happened with that. Juventus went to uh, Pez. So we'll find out, I'm sure, at some point whether this means that Pez are going to get it or not. Uh, but that is the first piece of news. Let me know your thoughts below about if you really are that bothered about it. But it's just, licensing is crazy. It really is. I mean, you know, they still have all the player licenses, but you can't use the badge and you've got to change the name. And it's, yeah, licensing. You may think it's simple. Absolutely not. It is insane. Right, now let's talk about the fun stuff and the main meat and veg of this video. I'm going to leave timestamps, so if you would like to just browse through them you can do that um, but we are going to be getting quite deep uh, into what the gameplay changes are now they put this out last year as well and it's going to sound nice and look great but at the end of the day you're not going to know until you actually play the game for yourself so let's talk about the features first of all and basically what this covers uh, you know, I had a quick look over it and pretty much what they're saying is Instead of using, for an example, we can just use this. A through pass last year was initiated by the use of short or long passing attributes, and that was it. That determined the quality of the pass. Whereas this year, in FIFA 21, a through pass is a mixture of short and long pass, but it also has vision and composure attributes as well. Which makes sense. It makes, it makes perfect sense because, you know, someone of i don't know who's a quality i mean bruno fernandez you know the guy can pass the ball he's, he's done a good a lot of assists he knows he's got the vision he's got the ability but then someone like dan james is yeah his passing and his short pass might be all right but he hasn't got the same vision his composure isn't the same and it will make a difference now whether this is going to really be a huge difference in game you will we'll wait and see you know if you're playing on assisted settings anyway how different is this going to be? But the news is they're adding a couple more stats when it comes to like passing, and I'm sure this will change with shooting, crossing. They'll all use different kind of uh, stats as well. So that's the first thing. Now, this is the next thing, uh, agile dribbling, okay? And I'm gonna show you a video in, in just a second. It's like four seconds long. And this is the problem that I have with this, or the problem that I have in general with FIFA. So, Let's just go through this, right? One of our biggest goals is to make dribbling a balanced matchup for the jockey mechanic, which honestly is really hard to jockey sometimes with the dribbling. Um, the intention is to design a dribbling system that's more explosive, agile, and fluid while still ensuring it remains similar to what is seen on the real-life pitch. 
the to perform agile dribbling what you'll basically do is hold r1 while moving the left stick and you will notice the dribbler moving the ball with rapid and precise touches every player in the game can agile dribble mm, i don't know if i like that but however the higher a player's dribbling agility reactions and ball control attributes the quicker more precise and better they will be keeping at the ball so basically now someone like neymar messi you're not gonna be able to get the ball off them that's what they're saying and, and this is why have a look at this i'm going to show you a video right now this is sun okay this is sun from tottenham okay up against ashley young okay let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see oh we've gone too far so this is sun sun has not got the best dribbling in the world yeah he's a good dribbler but he's not the best but have a look at this that's ridiculous if you ask me i mean this is my biggest gripe with fifa you know they put in realism attributes and stuff to the game and then this is the dribbling look how ridiculous even ronaldo in his prime didn't have feet like this i mean you can keep watching it over and over again i mean you're telling me this is realistic it's mental no one is dribbling like this it's like boom 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 no no i don't want it this is what annoys me about fifa so i mean i'll literally keep watching it because it's it's just come on this is sun this isn't even neymar this isn't messi ronaldo back in his prime as i say you know ronaldo doesn't have the feet like he used to but even he would struggle to do this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen uh, fifteen touches in four seconds that's mental all right so i just had to get that out of the way let me know your thoughts i mean are you happy with that i think it's going to be a little bit over the top and i think high quality dribblers etc are going to be severely op but i often say it time will tell uh, and they're also introducing contextual agile dribbling uh, this mechanic is optional but it is enabled by default so they've got another option you can turn it on if you want or off uh, when enabled it will make your players automatically perform agile dribbling in certain situations for example when a one-on-one -on -one with an opponent but it can be turned off but it's probably going to be on by default online oh geez i don't know what's going to happen online then i don't know i don't know what ea do sometimes when they come up with these mechanics this this is just not going to make the game more of a sim no more of a pick up and play absolutely so we know what crowd they're going for Okay, so let's talk about creative runs, shall we? All right, so I'm a little bit more intrigued about this one. So what they have is directed runs. So you can now take full 360 degree control over the direction of the runs of your teammates by flicking the right stick after triggering a run using the L1 left button uh, and then flicking the right stick or after calling a teammate short you can use the r1 and then flick the right stick so they're taking a leaf out of pez's book as simple as that and pez you can use l1 and the right stick to enable your players to make a run they should have introduced this personally a long long time ago um there is actually a video here that does sort of showcase it um if we have a look at this one so you're going to keep your eye on this guy right here on the ball eden hazard so he basically makes the run himself this is probably if this is um you know against the cpu it's probably on very very easy beginner because I'm, I'm just looking at the ai and it's horrendous because if you watch this guy here if you have a look at the run i like the way you know, he lays it off and then you can see he just quickly peels away so right there he decides i'm going to go the other way but if you look at the defenders i mean tweedle d and tweedle dumb here do absolutely nothing i mean he's just standing there the whole time and uh you never give a player like hazard you know a bus worth of space to be able to you know smash a volley but there's the principle that's how it's used he lays it off you'll hold l1 at this point you'll flick the right stick that way and then he's going to accelerate and run away to pick up some freedom so there you go that's basically creative runs um, you've also got directed pass and go so decide where your teammate makes their run after a pass by immediately flicking the right stick in the desired direction this feature works with any type of pass ground pass lob pass through ball and even crosses uh, and then you flick the right stick so there we go i wish they could actually show us i don't think there's another video no there isn't another one about the next one um, so yeah, it's going to work for all those. Uh, you can have up to five players performing a directive run 
or directed pass simultaneously. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty insane. So you can have five players. Wow, that's that you're gonna, you you could have some serious runnage going on from your team. Um, you've got player lock, press in both sticks. So you press L3 and R3 at the same time to lock to your current player when in attack. When you're locked to a player and pass the ball, the CPU AI will then take control of the on-ball player, allowing you to move your off-ball player and after a pass back. Wow, that's... It's getting technical. It's going to take some time to uh, definitely learn that. Uh, for more control, flick the right stick anytime after using the player lock described above to switch and lock to another player, taking control of your teammate's movement along the way. All right, well, it sounds finicky and uh, interesting at the same time, but I think this is definitely one that I would use a lot more. Okay, so next up, positioning personality. All right, so basically what this means, and let's just get into the meat and veg of this one. Uh, we want players who are tactically aware to have bigger impacts in FIFA by being in the right place at the right time to shoot, pass, or block the ball. Um, we want to focus our explanation on a few specific behaviors that will showcase the personality and the depth of this system. Uh, they do have some examples uh, down here. Uh, so two main attributes dictate how good players will be at these behaviors, right? So you've got positioning for attacking personality and defensive awareness for defensive personality. Straight out the book of pairs. They are using and uh, they are copying some of Konami's mechanics, but... You know, to each his own. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so let's have a look here. So the attacking positional attribute impact. So you've got onside and offside runs. Awareness to know when to slow down and time the run to perfectly stay onside. Um, so if it's low, you've got it like this. And uh, if it's high, he's going to be making... Uh, the run you can see he's a little bit further back here here he's made a little bit more of an explosive run forward uh, this behavior will be overridden when using fast build-up tactics or slash uh, and whatever get in behind player instructions as the intent of those is to focus more on using speed see i use that anyway i feel like a lot of the time your players don't want to make the run so generally i would just play fast build up so i guess that doesn't really factor in as much which is a bit of a shame we've got passer readiness run so understanding of when the ball possessor is ready to make a pass so the player can time their run perfectly high attribute players will show intelligent timing and movement based on where the passer is facing and moving this behavior will be overridden when using fast build-up okay so basically a lot of the time if you do change the tactics they may not even work right now you know obviously he's got the free ball he's got the space right the defender's got to make a decision. Do you go to the ball, which you obviously would, because what's the point of staying with the runner if uh, if you're not closing the guy with the ball down? But if you just watch his run here, he just peels away from him as that defender is going across, and then that opens up some space. I mean, the ball kind of goes through this guy's foot. It's the old uh, physics and all that. But it, the point is, you know, he's creating the space for himself. So one minute he's with the defender, then he peels away. The defender pushes forward, creates some space, gets the ball, and then he smashes it in the back of the net. So if you watch it in real time, there it is. One touch, bang. So that's what they're showcasing. Which is something I'd like Konami to work on. It, definitely the AI positioning, the how smart they are on and off the ball. It's such a key thing in any kind of sports game it really is all right let's move down not really too worried about any of this uh, we've got defending so defensive awareness attribute impact so what this basically does is we've got run tracking we've got the ability to track a run and anticipate one before it happens with highly aware defenders doing a much better job we've got two-man marking to prevent counter attacks ability for two high attribute defenders to mark a striker so they have limited space to avoid a counter attack so basically you know get a couple of defenders on Messi or Lewandowski and stop them from uh, counter attacking but it requires two AI teammate players each with very high defensive awareness attributes you've got defensive midfielder diligent tracking the ability to uh, intelligently mark and track runs by attackers without giving up or leaving them open 
They will track dangerous attacking opponents even if they are already marked by a teammate due to the scale of the threat. Uh, we've also got defensive midfielder cutting passing lanes. Uh, we've got active versus passive winger behaviors determine how active wingers can get when having to perform defensive duties such as marking defensive positioning and tracking runs. There's a lot of stuff, isn't there? Uh, fullback cooperation. So better awareness of the teammates' fullbacks positioning, allowing them to better work together when marking. When one fullback pushes up, the other will cover and become more aware to mark and track attackers. You kind of have that in pairs as well. You know, uh, which one is it? Is it false wingers? Mm, one of them, I don't know. But either way, it's like one, one fullback pushes up, the other one comes in. But we have advanced tactics. So uh, FIFA are just kind of doing it a different way. Uh, and then you've got right here. So this is a prime example of basically the fullback reading the game. He understands this guy takes a terrible touch, by the way. Comes across and nips it off him. He's not a threat at this point. So that's what they're saying. Takes a touch. Comes across. Bosh. All right. Next up, we've got smoother encounters. This one will be interesting to see how this actually plays out. I mean, there's a video here and I'll show you it or a little snippet. And it looks good, but how's it going to actually play when people have the hands in their game and the ball is ricocheting all over the place? Uh, so they've created a new animation system and combined them to better decide how players interact uh, physically with each other. This will reduce the amount of chaotic situations in game. And man, oh man, have we seen a few of those. Um, so basically, just to show you, this is FIFA 20. You can see players are falling over the place. And uh, we'll, we'll watch it again real quick, okay? So... Makes the save, then you got a player falling down, he falls down, falls down, falls down. Over here, it, it does look a lot smoother, I'm not going to lie. It comes off the uh, the forward right here, ricochets away, slides it, and yeah, far better, far better. But once again, we'll see how this actually plays out when we play FIFA, because there's a big difference between saying and doing. Uh, we've got the intention for this system is uh, for key moments in the match, like battles for possession or, f net f or net front scrambles to result in more lifelike encounters as players strive to get the ball rather than situations where players may have unrealistically fallen over one another, yes, constantly. Um, so here's FIFA 20. You can see players are just bundling into each other. And then on FIFA 21, you know, he's actually riding the challenge. He jumped over it. This player was smart enough to get out the way. And, uh, although, you know, this guy kind of just ran off. I, I don't really know. Like, at least here he's trying to get the ball. I don't know why here he just decides I'm going to go for a sprint and just runs off. But the next thing they had was an enhanced CPU, AI, and competitor mode. Um, I'm not really that fussed about this whole competitor mode stuff. Let's see here. This is a brand new way to play against the CPU AI that aims to replicate the play styles of some of the best FIFA Pro players in the world. Competitor mode gives the CPU AI a better understanding of skill moves, dribbling, spacing tactics, and it will constantly look to create better scoring opportunities. You can expect uh, aggressive passes, complex skill moves, and even a change of tactics and mentality if you are leading against them for example okay well why is this just not standard that's what i don't get why why are you making this out to be a mode if you're asking me the ai should be doing this anyway why would they not change their tactics while i'm playing them that makes the game more fun when you've got a little bit of well some brains within the operation and uh, when you're playing a match if you're abusing the wings then they change their tactics so that's a little bit weird why don't they just make this a standard standard norm I don't know. Am I missing something? You, you let me know in the comments. Now, uh, let's see what else we got here. To complement this, we enhance the CPU AI control players to have more granular objectives, meaning that each CPU AI control player on the field will exhibit behaviors that are more similar to a human player when defending attacking. Like I said, this should just be the norm. Make this the norm. Okay, moving on. We've got headers. So... This is a little video you can see. They've now got manual headers, ladies and gentlemen. So the ball is swung in and you can manually aim into the corner. Bosh. And probably miss 95% of them, but the option is there. 
So, in FIFA 20, we made the decision to make headers less effective, resulting in less goals being scored from headers as part of our efforts to promote skill differentiation and the idea that most of the goals that are scored are a direct result of player actions. But in FIFA 21, to improve the viability of scoring with headers while keeping a skill gap in the game, well, well... Uh, we are introducing manual heading. To enable this option, a player would set the assisted headers option to off. All right, so you basically can just turn it off. I very much doubt anyone's going to bother with it, to be honest, if it's that difficult and it gives you a disadvantage, but there's an option for you. Uh, when playing with this option, your headers will not be assisted any way with the aim and the power used when performing the header, determining the initial target for the header before the header is then potentially impacted by error. Complicated. So yeah, this is good for manual players. But anyone who's playing FIFA, just pick up and play. Ah, you ain't turning this off. Come on now. All right, moving down, defending. So based on community feedback, always like community feedback as long as you listen we improved the controlled tackling system introduced in fifa 20 to make it more accurate than before with players better positioning themselves in order to perform the ideal standing tackle um so here you've got a little bit of hold up play comes across shielding the ball I mean, what is this? FIFA 21 right here? I have no idea. Uh, we also rework shoulder challenges and seal outs to make more effective and more realistic. Shoulder challenges have been reworked. Okay, seal outs are when the defender puts himself between the attacker and the ball. Isn't that called shielding? Who on earth came up with seal outs? Honestly, leave a comment. Have you ever heard of seal outs? As far as I'm concerned, that's shielding. You're shielding the ball seal out it sounds like something you buy off amazon all right forget that one uh, to perform a shoulder challenge or a seal out no shielding tap the l2 button while side by side with your opponent all right I, I like the sound of defending though it's something i've always complained about with pez is the fact there's not enough controls to defend and if they don't step their game up with the next gen i'm gonna be thoroughly disappointed all right, next up, blocking. We're excited to be refreshing blocking in FIFA 21. I mean, it, it seemed like it was a block simulator at times. Uh, the team has completely rewritten the blocking system and added it to the control tackling technology, or the CTT, creating more reliable and realistic blocks while or when defending shots and passes. All right, so this is basically what attribute based. A player's attributes will determine, okay. We don't need this much text, EA. Okay, you can just put that and we'll know what's it all about. Um, passing. Main focus here is to improve the passing system by adding a better understanding of space and the opponent's position in order to pass towards the target that makes most sense for the receiver in the situation. So through passing, this system was rebuilt from the ground up to improve possible pass targets, receiver selection and increased player personality in in addition uh new concepts were introduced so we've now got pass openness we've got pass complexity uh, i'm not going to read all this because we'll be here all day otherwise uh, and there's also a new semi-assisted through ball assistance setting that takes it into consideration your controller input angle to decide the target of the pass and give you more control more on this later crossing this system was remodeled to create more unique crosses that help players get the most out of their build-up now well, first of all it wasn't remodeled was it it was just tweaked and enhanced uh, but we've got new whipped cross driven cross ground driven cross i mean these aren't new as i say they're not new they're just re reskinned revamped um and they've also updated the cross assistant setting fair enough um this is now the default setting and is similar to how the semi assisted setting worked in previous titles uh, but semi assisted is slightly different now we have updated this setting to bring it more in line with how the other semi assisted settings work making it more manual so that's going to be tougher so basically now fifa on manual is not going to be uh a slouch and it never was so it's going to be even harder but if that's what you want to play go for it 
All right, what else we got? I'm not really too worried about the other things here. Uh, so animation fluidity. We improved our animation transition system, allowing for faster transitions, which support a more fluid and responsive experience. So basically, ladies and gents, FIFA is going to be faster this year, uh, especially in passing, shooting, ball control, dribbling, and player movement. Anytime you speed up the animations or the responsiveness and together, it's going to be a quicker game. If FIFA 21 is not, I will be surprised. All right, giving players more control. Told you, this is going to be a long video, but we're just going to sort of plow through these because um, you guys can check out the article. If you would like, I'll leave the link in the description. Increase control. So bridge and nutmeg skill moves. Uh, we've got bridge skill. We've got directional nutmegs. Uh, we've got cancel foul advantage. Allows the player to ask for a foul instead of keeping the advantage of the play. So there you go. We spoke of that before in the last video. We've got instant hard tackles. That is the ability to perform hard tackles instantly without having to hold and power up the tackle button. Setup touch 2.0. Faster animations. Keeping the ball closer to the player and performing more accurate shots. Improved finesse shots, which are always good. Call players into box on goal kicks. Okay, so you can now ask them to come into the box. Obviously, they updated the laws of the game. Uh, improved super cancel mechanics. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is the one thing I've always hated. No, you can't really super cancel in FIFA. People say, oh, you can. No, you can't really. You want a good super cancel, play Pez. It's superior in every way. So now they've added a variety of ways to cancel actions, giving you more control over your moves on the pitch. Greater for situations where you want to surprise opponents that are able to anticipate your moves by paying attention to your player's animation. So if you want to do a hard super cancel, you will do L2, R2, um, and then L1 and R1 all together. Jeez, you couldn't just make them two buttons? Allows players to go into free, mo uh, free move in any situation. But anyway, I love that. Beautiful. Uh, the previous Super Cancel will still exist, but it's more restricted. Yes, that's what I want. I want a hard one. I want a hard one, people. Insert joke. All right, Pass Shot Cancel. Allows you to cancel any pass or shot request and continue dribbling. Thank you again. Love it. Look, they're copying Pez, ladies and gents, but it's not a bad thing. Uh, and then you've got skill moves cancel allow users to cancel specific skill moves brilliantly done uh, and there's a little fake for you look at that ready bosh 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 fantastically done so more settings as we've mentioned a few times before one of the biggest goals we have for fifa is to give you more control over your gameplay to end that or to the end to that end good in FIFA 21, we have created and tuned the following settings. So we've got auto flare passes. So if you have that on, players will perform flare passes contextually. So they do it themselves. If you turn it off, guess what? They don't do them unless it's modified and you do it yourself. We've got auto clearances. They'll automatically do it if you have it on. And if you have it off, uh, you'll have to do it yourself. You've got auto shots. I don't know how that works. Players will perform automatic shots. Seems like a bit of a cheat there, doesn't it? Why would you use that? Or oh, if you turn it off, players will never perform automatic shots. I want to shoot myself, not let the game do it for me. Uh, player lock on by default, but the player lock feature described in the creative runs will be available to use, or you can turn it off. You've got contextual agile dribbling, as we stated before. You can turn that on and off. Assisted headers, you can turn that on and off. Through ball assistance, you've got semi. And then obviously I think you've got auto or you've got assisted. You've got cross assistance. Turn that as assisted or semi. And then you'll have directed runs indicator. Okay, so that will show the directed runs indicator when a player performs a directed pass and go for a run. So I'd probably say put it on to start with maybe. Or if you want a more of a broadcast no cursor type deal then switch it off later uh, and here's just a little screenshot of all the new options but konami please take note you know i know you're coming out with a very small minute upgrade or you know roster update this year but for next gen this is what i want to see i want to see some added enhancements okay extra buttons more things to do that's what i want you don't have to go crazy 
Yeah, there are some things in FIFA that are mad, but still, I like the fact that they are adding more EA and at least trying something. All right, skill move improvements. I'm probably not going to worry about these because I don't care. I'm not one to sit there and do 97 skill moves in, you know, 25 seconds. So if you want to learn about this stuff, feel free to check out the article itself or the pitch notes. Um, so, yeah, they've just changed things like ball distance was made closer for rainbows and flicks. Rainbows. Uh, all axis skill moves. So all players can now perform right stick skill moves but their effectiveness depends on their skill of course um, some skill moves can be cancelled these ones they've added a couple more as well with the faint forward and turn the drag to heal and the ball roll fake turn uh, and then we've got competitive and core community feedback all right i'm not going to dive into all this because it's a little bit too samey and long but that ladies and gents it's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to cover today. It was generally the gameplay side of things. I've said it many times. I'm not a footman. I like playing career mode or offline against the AI. I want to see some gameplay tweaks and see what they're about. So anyway, let me know your thoughts below. Are you happy with all the goods or not? Let me know your thoughts. But we shall return shortly. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest, on pairs. I might just start... Uh, doing some couple of old school matches. I don't know. Time is ticking away now. We're only, what, like five, six weeks away from PES 2021. So, yeah, I'll probably uh, come up with something. But there's probably going to be some news this week for PES. So stay tuned for that. If you did watch the whole video, smash the like button. Truly appreciate it. We'll be back shortly. And until next time, take care.